Now, I, I'm really excited to share this clip because I've constantly been asked, what is the difference between the modern Western dad and the patriarch in the scriptures or in the Bible? I, I've constantly tried to contrast the playful father from like Bluey or other depictions that our culture is excited about and, you know, sort of Abraham. And so I saw this clip the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know if I've ever heard anyone articulate more clearly what I think is the difference. This is Chris Williamson and Eric Weinstein having a conversation about what they're calling high agency. And I was like, this is what I'm talking about. And it's really hard because there really aren't good words for this. And Eric Weinstein actually invented this phrase several years ago, and it's been bandied around. And so they have a quick conversation about it. I'm going to play this clip and then just give you a couple thoughts and let Kurt to get your reaction to this as well. Again, George uh, has this question he uses to work out who is the highest agency person in your entire life. Tell me. You're trapped in a South American prison. <laughs> you know, one yes, of this one is. It's absolutely, it's one of those or 5,000 people in there. It's 100 people per room. There's half the number of bunk beds. Everyone's got a skinhead. You have 24 hours to get out and you've got one phone call. Who'd you ring? It's hard in my case. Why? I happen to be the brother of Brett Weinstein. I happen to have worked for Peter Thiel. Um, my wife is a total supermind. Uh, I've got no shortage of these people. You only get one phone call. I know. I can't figure out who. Most people, the thing that I worry about is that most people have no one. Yep. But, you know, it has to do with people who are extremely generative and high trust and can readjust their thinking because no solution is clear. But yeah, I think a different version of that question is, is your problem which call to place or that you have no one you can even think of? I love this framing. So <clears throat> I, I would say, you know, what Eric Weinstein is wrestling with there, do you have no one to call? And again, I see this as there, you have no father. Your father is designed to be the highest agency person in your life. And so part of what I'm coaching fathers to do from the time they first start having children, or even before that, when they're young boys, is we're trying to raise sons to be high agency men because fathers need to be maximally high agency people because they're leading, they already have a team that they, and they're, they're, there's going to be an unlimited and unspecified number of complex problems that are going to be put on their shoulders. Hopefully it's not your kid calling you from a South American prison <laughs> saying, dad, I, I got to get out. I got 24 hours. What I try to accumulate in my life as a father is every kind of capital to be able to address those kinds of problems. And I'm like, please call me. I will be on the plane and I'm going to bring every resource of this family to rescue you. Like that is fatherhood 101. Like I am accumulating relational capital. I'm accumulating spiritual capital. I'm accumulating financial capital. I'm accumulating intellectual capital so that I can properly lead my family and I can stay as high agency as possible. It's not for my benefit, not because I'm trying to cultivate some kind of independent identity, but because I know these problems are coming for my family. And somebody needs to be there to be able to help solve these problems. And it's not that women, of course, can't also be high agency, but fathers must be high agency. That's the difference. And so when I see depictions of low agency fatherhood, when I see the bluey dad, I'm like, that guy, he's a lot of fun, but my gosh, if you're in a South American prison, I'm not calling that guy. We're not going to be, it's not pretend time anymore. Like I need a father in that moment and these problems are coming. And so we have to be preparing men to be men, fathers to be fathers. And so that's the essence. And I'm like, it's been so hard to describe this properly. So when I heard this phrase high agency. And then this awesome thought experiment in the South American prison. I'm like, if, if any father is listening to this, please make it your goal to be the guy that your children call. That is what it means to be cultivating fatherhood and on all the different things you're trying to do. And I know that when you're like 25 years old and you're listening to this, you're like, I'm not high agency. I know, I know. Like your job is to get there. <laughs> You've got some decades in front of you. Don't make decisions that are going to take away your agency take away your ability to maximally 
make decisions that are in the best interest of your family. So when I see guys giving away their agency in a way that is really going to be dangerous for their future family, that's the alarm bell that's going off in my head. And you see this with Abraham. Right after we introduced to Abraham, Lot is, is carried away in this, this terrible tragedy. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Abraham gets the 318 trained men in his household. And he literally goes out there and conquers you know, these five kings in order to bring back his nephew. Like it literally describes a very similar scenario to this thought experiment. And that's what I'm telling people. Like, look, read that chapter of the Bible. Avram, the exalted father, is this high agency guy. And, we're, and when we're given a depiction of what that actually looked like, when the scriptures try to give us the first depiction of that, this is what it shows us. This dad who's able to rescue really his adopted son from this terrible tragedy. And that's what we need to be prepared to do. So anyway, yeah, I get really stirred up about this one. Because I'm finally like, oh, finally, somebody's describing <laughs> what is clearly, you know, the biblical father in a way that I can actually recognize and maybe share with other people.